We've all heard about Spanx, and most women have used this product at some point in their lives. Maybe you have even worn a pair. Combining the control of pantyhose with the freedom of bare legs, Spanx have become a household name. But who is the woman behind this product, and what impossible odds did she overcome to change the comfort of millions of women around the world? Meet Sarah Blakely, self-made billionaire, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. In 2012, she was named on Time Magazine's list of the 100 most influential people. She's not just an innovator and businesswoman, she is also committed to educating and lifting up other women entrepreneurs. A true success story, we can all agree. But how did she go from not going to law school, being a stand-up comedian, and then selling fax machines for seven years, to becoming the youngest woman to ever make Forbes' list of self-made billionaires? What a ride! Jump on the roller coaster with us and get an inside look at how she did it. Hi, and welcome to our channel where we look at famous figures and entrepreneurs and peel back the curtain of their achievements so we can learn the secrets of their success. If you like what you see, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more inspiring videos about the lives, successes, and lessons learned from some of the most famous business figures of our time. In this video, we will look at how a woman hacked a pair of pantyhose and took that invention to the top. Find out how she ingeniously convinced buyers to take on her product, and follow her from the early days as a saleswoman to her life as an entrepreneur and philanthropist, and tell you exactly how she got there. But most importantly, we will look at the principles and the lessons that she used and learned, and that we can also use to achieve the success that you want. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Blakely was born in Florida in 1971 and graduated from Florida State University. Her mother was an artist, and her father was a trial attorney. Following in the footsteps of her father, Blakely set her sights on law school. But after getting a low score on the admissions test, Blakely changed her mind. Who can relate? Have you changed course at some point in your life? Maybe, like Blakely, a decision to pivot changed your life as well. For Sarah, failure to attend law school was not a demoralizing setback, but a change in direction. Blakely's father actually encouraged his children to fail and learn from it. Every week, he would ask her and her brother what they failed at this week. For him, not failing was the failure, because it meant you hadn't tried something. So Sarah took that failure as an opportunity to try other things. She then took a job at Disney World and tried her hand as a stand-up comedian. Now that is a great opportunity for failure. So after doing both these things for a while, she was offered a job as a fax machine saleswoman at the age of 23. What better job than sales to fail and fail forward? By taking her past experiences and not worrying about failing, two years later, by the age of 25, she was promoted to the position of national sales trainer. Pretty incredible rise, right? Many people at this point would be content, would build their career in that one company and would keep rising up the corporate ladder. And the story would end here. But not Sarah. Let's find out what she did next. And this would change the comfort of countless women and the apparel world Forever. As a woman living in Florida, she was forced to attend meetings in swelteringly hot weather while wearing pantyhose. She hated both the feel of the pantyhose and the look of the seams in her open-toed shoes. But she liked the way the control top eliminated panty lines and made her torso appear slimmer. One day, she was getting ready for a party and wanted to wear a pair of white pants, but wanted to avoid the panty line that white pants are known for. In a move that would transform herself and the apparel industry forever, she cut the feet off the pantyhose, creating the very first iteration of Spanx. I'd never worked in fashion or retail, Blakely has said. I just needed an undergarment that didn't exist. Isn't it crazy how such a simple idea can be so transforming? So while working at the office supply company, 27-year-old Sarah Blakely spent the next two years and all of her savings, a few thousand dollars, laying the groundwork for Spanx. When she was ready, she then drove to North Carolina, which is a hub for hosiery manufacturing. After approaching every manufacturer who would see her, she found herself being turned down over and over and over again with her idea. But in looking back on this failure, Blakely has said, failure to me became not trying versus not succeeding. How often do we beat ourselves up after a failure, instead of looking at what we've learned and realizing that there is success in simply trying and trying again? This is one of the principles that Blakely has built her life on. And something she learned from this experience is that the hosier industry which sells products mostly worn by women, is overseen almost entirely by men. But it was three young women who turned things around for Blakely. How did that happen? 
One of the mill operators ended up calling her back, having been encouraged by his three daughters to take on Blakely's idea. The first prototype for Spanx was developed soon after, and now started the challenge of actually building a company and generating sales. But Blakely then hit her next obstacle. She couldn't find buyers for her product. And starting Spanx, Sarah heard a lot of no's. So she dug her lucky red backpack out of her mum's attic, the one she used during college, believing it would help change the course of her startup company. Her friends begged her to buy a Prada bag, but Sarah refused. The lucky red backpack was there each step of the way, even during her first sale at the Neiman Marcus headquarters. At her meeting with a Neiman Marcus buyer, which was not going well, she suddenly had an impulsive idea. She took the buyer to the ladies' restroom, where she changed into the Spanx in front of her. The strength of the product won out and the buyer was sold, and a huge obstacle was overcome. Blakely was not yet out of brilliant ideas though. Next, she needed people to actually purchase her product. Can you guess what she did next? It has become a lesson in business ingenuity. After realizing she needed sales to keep Nyman Marcus ordering her product and even buying more, she actually paid her friends, family, and old acquaintances to buy her product, then writing checks to reimburse them. Despite not making a profit on those sales, she drove up demand for Spanx, ensuring that stores continued to stock them and keeping them on the shelf so her product could get even more exposure. Soon after, she sent a gift basket to The Oprah Winfrey Show, one of the most watched TV shows at the time. Along with a gift card and an explanation of her product, this action would pay off leading to Oprah Winfrey naming Spanx one of her favorite things, resulting in a huge rise in sales. At this point, Blakely was now 29 years old, and after knocking down one obstacle after another, the success of Spanx finally led to quitting her job at the office supply company. In the first two years of sales, Spanx made $14 million. As she built the company, she had a philosophy she lived by. With every obstacle that has happened to me in my life, my brain immediately says, where is the hidden blessing? In starting a business and growing a business, every day is learning how to manage obstacles. Amazing, right? Imagine how drastically that simple change in perspective could shift your life and your career. 10 years later, Sarah Blakely became the youngest person ever to be named on Forbes' list of self-made billionaires. But Blakely is all about sharing that success. In 2021, when the majority of shares in Spanx were bought by a major investment company, she celebrated by treating her employees to two first-class plane tickets anywhere in the world and giving all 750 of them $10,000. Her philanthropy was just the beginning. She started the Sarah Blakely Foundation to educate women and train them as entrepreneurs. She also pledged support for female-run businesses throughout the pandemic. And if that wasn't incredible enough, she has joined the Giving Pledge, a campaign where wealthy people pledge to give the majority of their money to philanthropic causes. In 2014, Forbes listed Blakely as the 93rd most powerful woman in the world. Not bad for someone who worked at Disney, was a stand-up comedian, and sold fax machines for years. And the infamous red backpack? It has become a symbol of women's potential and inner strength all over the world. And that is how Sarah Blakely became a self-made billionaire, and is now changing the lives of countless women globally. What did you learn from Blakely's success? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep failing forward. Turn failure on its head and look for the blessings in new obstacles. You never know what inspiration you might find.